And in closing, I will reaffirm the right of all Dreamlandians to own a home as the key to independence. Yay, woohoo, yippee! So, Francine, how are we gonna do this? What? Well, you just gave the speech, don't you have a plan? Of course. Um, alright, here's how we're gonna do this. We will create a government-sponsored enterprise, or GSE, called Fannie Mac. Fannie Mac won't pay taxes. What? Oh, no. I want my cut. I want a little bit off the top. Fannie Mac's going to be paying taxes. Hold on, Fred. Hold on. We use this company to manipulate the housing market. That's why we don't want them to pay taxes. It would be like paying taxes to ourselves. This company will be allowed to borrow Acorn notes from the Federal Reserve at a lower rate than anyone else. Um... How does borrowing from the Federal Reserve work again, Francine? I'm glad you asked. The Federal Reserve, or FRED for short, issues bonds. These bonds can be bought or sold. Uh, let's say the FRED issues bonds at 5%. This means lenders can buy a bond and get 5% annual return on investment every year. This means ba or banks, lenders, can buy a bond and get a 5% return on investment every year. And so banks will not lend to anyone else below 5%. And so the bare minimum they will lend at will be 5%, but most always it is higher because there's there's always a little bit of risk in those. So the interest rate on government bonds sets a baseline for interest rates throughout the economy? Yes. However, the same deal works in reverse. Lenders can sell the government bonds back to the government for cash, but then the lenders have to pay interest back to the government. Again, the lenders will only sell their bonds back to the government if they can get a higher interest rate by loaning money to the people. So if a company can get 8% from lending money out to people and only 5% from the government bonds, the company will sell the government bonds paying 5% interest to the government but getting 8% interest from other people, a net gain of 3%. Now, Fannie Mac can sell its government bonds at a lower rate than what the Fred says. So, Fannie Mac can loan money to worse customers? Yes again, Fred. Let's say the federal interest rate is 5% for every company. But for Fannie Mac, it's 2%. This means Fannie Mac can loan to people at lower rates. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated, and this is the meat of the scam. Fannie Mac can loan to riskier home buyers than other companies, and can take on worse loans than other companies because of the special interest rate it gets. Think of it like a bundle of loans. Fannie Mac can handle a bundle of loans that will have more people who end up defaulting. And since so many people default, that's money that Fannie Mac won't be getting. So when you have a big bundle of loans, higher risk ends up meaning that the entire bundle will yield less revenue for Fannie Mac. But as long as Fannie Mac can get more than 2% profit, they're still coming out ahead. This bundle, which performs at below 5%, is called subprime. If it was performing above 5%, at or above 5%, then it would be called prime. So why is this even a scam? The scam is the lower interest rate, which allows Fannie Mac to cheat at the expense of Dreamlandians. Lower interest rates will result in Fannie Mac borrowing more than it would under normal market condition, and this glut in acorn notes leads to inflation. <laughs> So in a way, Jumlandians are paying for the privileges of Fannie Mac. I guess you can't just get special conditions for free. Somebody always ends up paying for it down the line somehow. Right, Fred, but it's worse than that. Or, I mean, it's better than that. It allows private lenders to abrogate risk. Private lenders who pay 5% instead of 2% can't handle as high default rate as Fannie Mac. This is okay for prime loans, but what happens is that these companies will give out subprime loans anyway and will take for themselves the performing subprime loans and sell the underperforming or loans that need to be restructured to Fannie Mac. And so private lenders basically shift the cost of risk onto Dreamlandians. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. It will make Dreamlandians more dependent on us, not only through higher inflation, but also more dependent on us because now a government-sponsored enterprise owns their home. Even if they took out a loan from a private agency, if it ends up needing to be restructured, they will now uh, be living in a home owned by us. Indirectly, of course. Right, but just in case anything goes wrong, Fannie Mac has a 2.5 billion acorn note line of credit. Do you like your new home? 
Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, Fred. I like it very much. I finally have a place that I can call my own. I can call my own home. Oh, my gosh. I am so grateful to Fanny Mac for having this. Now my children can finally grow up in their own place and not having to live next to noisy neighbors in an apartment. This just in. This just in. Fanny Mac is now insolvent. They have exhausted their credit line and are defaulting, and the defaultings just keep pouring in. Markets down 500 points as a result of as a result of this news. Other lenders who depended on Fanny Mac to take on their crap loans are now stuck with said crap loans and are losing money like crazy for it. We're ruined. We're ruined, Francine. Our scheme has been exposed. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have done this. I knew this wouldn't work. I, 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 there's. There had to be something wrong with it somewhere along the line. I knew it just wouldn't work, and now it doesn't work. Oh no, Fred. Oh no, Fred. Relax, relax, relax. This is our chance to take even more control. Listen, listen to the debate that's going on. <sighs> listen, everybody. This housing crisis was caused by government-sponsored enterprise, which is able to take on subprime loans by being able to sell back its government bonds at a lower interest rate, and this was an inflation tax on Greenlandians and private lenders were able to abrogate risk by shifting their underperforming loans to Fannie Mac, which created a bubble which caused a capital, capital glut, which... It may be useful at this point to reflect on how the U.S. markets came to be in this position. Put simply, lack of regulation. Yay, Thunderfoot! That's a simple explanation that I can understand. That must mean it's right. Yeah, and plus it comes from an atheist with an accent. So we know he understands the inner workings of government intervention in the mortgage industry despite never having demonstrated any knowledge on the subject before. Oh my gosh, you're right. Did these people not see that the crash occurred in the subprime sector, which happened to be the most regulated sector in the mortgage industry? Even if you don't understand all the nuts and bolts, and even if you don't understand this video, you at least have to be able to see that. Nope, people are stupid. And assholes like Thunderfoot provide the illusion of an answer to keep these suckers coming back to us for more. You know what to do now, right? Oh, most certainly. People of Dreamland, I feel your pain and have unveiled a new plan. We will give the mortgage companies 600 billion acorn notes to pay off their underperforming loans. But we will also increase regulation. The government is now authorized to buy any mortgage-related or financial asset that we deem to be troubled. But don't worry, we have to report to everything we do to Congress, the same people who got you into this mess. <laughs>